Welcome into Seattle Seahawks today. I am Tom Danny. We're going to break down the coaching staff. I'm going to go off on a stupid Tyler Lockett trade idea that we came across. But it is Super Bowl week. So if you guys want a shout out on Monday's show, we will give them to anyone who can correctly predict these three Super Bowl 56 props. Who has more receiving yards, Cooper Cup or Jamar Chase? You can type in Cup or Chase. Over or under, 5.5 total TDs. Again, it's over or under. And the winner of the Super Bowl, C-I-N for the Bengals, L-A-R for the Rams. So get those predictions in right now as we get ready for today's show. You're watching Seattle Seahawks today as the defensive coaching staff slowly but kind of sort of surely, maybe not so much, there is some moving pieces here, are coming into place. Earlier today, the report from Bruce Feldman was this. The Seahawks are going to hire Carl Scott as defensive passing game coordinator and secondary coach. The 36-year-old was with the Vikings last year before three years on Bama's staff as the DB's coach, and then somebody else actually the first to report this hire, but I don't know who ends it is. Recent gigs for Scott, who is generally viewed, at least was, a riser in the CFB coaching world, was briefly a DC at a small school, Southeastern Louisiana University, DB's coach at Louisiana Tech, then Tech Tech, then Alabama. And when you become a DB coach at Bama, you are on the path towards being a college DC. But instead, he jumped to Minnesota for only a year. Now is making moves to head over to the Seattle Seahawks with Pete Carroll. Now, there was also this note from Corbin Smith on Twitter. No great uh, Seahawks follow, of course. Sounds to me like the Seahawks may have their sights set on Carl, Stat or Carl Scott, regardless of whether or not Sean Desai comes as well. They could bring him in as defensive backs coach, and Desai could be co-defensive coordinator with passing game emphasis. Now, that report came out after or excuse me, before, before the update from Bruce Feldman. So you kind of have some passing game coordinator overlap there. But if you bring in Sean Desai, I think it's a great hire. Obviously, much has been made about Seattle making Clint Hurt the D.C. I would have rather had Sean Desai as my outright D.C. than Hurt. But if you can bring in all of those guys, I think that's a pretty good thing. Now, he's in the mix for the Vikings defensive coordinator job as well. But I'd still like to bring him in. I'm not as, as sold on how this staff ends up looking quite yet. But remember, Ed Donatel was supposed to be on this staff and now not so quickly. As there's this report from Jeremy Fowler that Donatel has emerged as the favorite for the Vikings DC job. Seattle, which was hiring him as a defensive assistant, is now bracing to lose him. So maybe you're able to bring in with Donatel not coming both Desai and Carl Scott, which I think would be great moves for your secondary players. Desai's path has been a pretty quick rising one. Was special teams coach at Temple, was football ops for a year at Miami, running backs coach and special teams at Boston College, jumps to the Bears as a defensive quality control coach, safeties coach, then boom, defense corner. I thought did a pretty darn good job as the D.C. for Chicago. So... I think this is where your staff looks like right now. Clint Hurt is your defensive coordinator and D-line coach. John Glenn's linebackers and potentially both Carl Scott and Sean Desai in a to-be-determined role. Maybe one's your secondaries coach and passing him. Maybe one is your DC slash corners coach. That's a, a path you could potentially pursue or some variation of those. We'll see. Uh, this is not set in stone, and I'm, I'm not going to bank on either or both of these guys truly being here. We'll, we'll see how this all plays. I think there's still quite a bit of moving pieces involved. So what would you grade this coaching staff? A, B, C, D, or F? I'll make this the uh, – you can get the ad break. Head right down there. Let me know what you would grade the staff this year for the Seattle Seahawks if this is what it ends up looking like. You're watching Seattle Seahawks today. I am Tom Downey, and I'm about to end this whole man's career. Internet Dummy has proposed a Tyler Lockett trade idea. I don't want to be too mean, but in this case, 
I, there's no way I, I can be anything but mean because it's that it's it's that dumb. Here's what fan cited Todd Vandenberg wrote. No disrespect to Todd personally, but this take has got to be ethered. Quote, Lockett's cap hit for 2022 is just over $10 million. That's not as onerous as it will be in the following seasons. In 2023, nearly $17 million, then just under 24 for the next two years. Lockett's side takes a huge jump in 2023 as well, from $3 million to $9.7 million. This is why 2022 might be the best year to move him. Todd continued, Seattle doesn't have to to trade him this year from a financial standpoint the Hawks are looking uh good as they have 36.5 million in cap space right now but Lockett's relatively low cap it and his banner performance will bring the greatest return this year there are several teams star for a top line receiver and that definitely describes Tyler Lockett Mr. Vandenberg what you have just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent writing were you even close and it can be considered a rational thought. Everyone watching this video is now dumber for having had to listen to it. This is so wrong for so many reasons, and it's the simplest of research that wasn't done that merits this level of attack. Number one, you're right, Tyler Lockett's awesome. He's a great football player. Why would you move on from him? The argument was, oh, draft picks and salary cap space. Eh, wrong. Factually inaccurate. Trading Tyler Lockett right now would incur an additional $18.15 million in salary cap hit. That is on top of what he's already making this year. You do not save money by dumping Tyler Lockett. You actually lose extra money by moving on from Tyler Lockett. A simple Google search, a look at the publicly available salary cap information makes that very clear. You do not save anything. It makes zero on-field sense and negative financial sense to consider trading Tyler Lockett. This is a failure by this writer, and it is unbelievably stupid. You, you have a job to at least know what you're talking about. The research wasn't done here. So unfortunately, this guy's dumb. I'm sorry. You, you can do better. You should do better. So how dumb, and this is a scale of 1 to 10. The answer, by the way, is 1,000 for, for proposing a Tyler Lockett trade. If someone tells you trade Lockett, they are wrong. They have not done their research, so feel free to also be mean in the comments section. We'll come back to Lockett a little bit more in depth because I'm not done heaping praise upon him. Today's show, though, is powered by BetUS. That's where you can place your bets on the uh, thing we start off today's show with, the, uh, the bets. 125% deposit bonus at chatsports.com slash bet. That way, in case you get some of your picks wrong for the game or props, you have extra money left over. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Seahawks125. It'll get you 125% deposit bonus now these are the props earlier copper chase more receiving yards i'm gonna go cooper cup i'm gonna go under five and a half total touchdowns and i'll go Bengals win the super bowl remember if you want to shout out on monday's video get your picks in the comment section right now if you get all three right we will give you a shout out hopefully by the way if you're putting your picks in there you go deposit with BetUS so you can make some money as well. Chatsports.com slash bet promo code Seahawks125. All right, back to Tyler Lockett, who has been one of the, I think, most underrated receivers in the NFL for a very long time. Lockett has not yet turned 30 years old, and for three straight years and almost four in 2018, he was like 45 yards shy or 35 yards shy. He's gone for over 1,000 yards, is averaging nine touchdowns per year in that four-year time frame. He is awesome. I love DK Metcalf. I love Ty Tyler Lockett. I'm trying to win football games right now. I'm not trying to trade him, even if it actually saved me, if even actually saved me salary cap space. In fact, I want to invest more at my wide receiver spot, which reminds me, Seahawks, don't forget to pay DK Metcalf. I've seen the 
trade DK rumors out there. Maybe one day we'll get to those. Also stupid. Don't do it. Go win football games. And unlike Locke, at least Metcalf would save you money. What a joke article that was. All right. Do you think Lockett and Metcalf is the best wide receiver duo in the NFL? Type in Y for yes it is or type in N for no. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. We'll stick on offense here for the last part of today's show. Gerald Everett, uh, PFF went through one free agent. Every team's got to bring back. Their choice was Everett for Seattle. I don't know about this one. I'm, I'm down to bring him back, but the number one guy they have to, I don't think this is it, actually. Um, he's not going to be that expensive. I think he could play better in 2022, but I, I think he can pick a better option. Anyway, here's what PFF argued. Quote, Everett's first year in Seattle bore striking statistical resemblance to all of his seasons with the Rams. However, it's probably an encouraging sign he did that with Russell Wilson missing time and then returning from an injured finger too soon and playing below his usual level. Everett remains a talented athlete, averaging 5.4 yards after the catch for his career, but, his, but this was his lowest average depth of target, 5.5 yards he's seen in the NFL. He likely has a far, a far higher ceiling next year, which I would be inclined to agree with. Everett did most of his damage, 420 yards, plays it, uh, it, with Russell Wilson at QB. But I don't think he's your number one got to find a way to, to bring him back in the end. In fact, I wouldn't hate the idea if Seattle tried to get a better tight end out there it's a pretty decent tight end grouping overall the production at this position has not been the same since Jimmy Graham was at his best in 2016 the numbers it's not great tight end production although again Everett had the best year of, of a tight end injuries of course playing a big factor with some of these recent years since Jimmy Graham in 2017 but I think the correct answer is DJ Reed that is the one guy I do not want to lose. I get worried. I know this organization does not like paying corners big money for the most part, especially as of late. I would pay DJ Reed before I paid Gerald Everett. But I want to hear from you. Should the Seahawks re-sign Gerald Everett? Type R to bring him back or type L for let him walk. 